faith is not a principle. Okay? Faith is neither a strategy nor a philosophy. You've got to understand. It's not something I know. All right? Faith is a spiritual force. Faith is a spiritual force. Faith is a spiritual weapon. Faith is a spiritual substance. Now what is it? Faith is a force. Faith is a force. Faith is a... Come on, say that. Force, weapon, substance. Glory to God. Force, weapon, and substance. So it's not something that you say, I know. It's something that you do. Okay? Because it's a force. It's a substance. It's a weapon. Now, it's the most potent force in the entire universe. The most powerful force. Mark 9.23, please. Mark 9.23 says, Jesus said unto this man, unto him, if thou canst believe, how many things? Come on, say it louder. All things are possible to him that believeth. So when something is not working in my life, the problem does not lie with God. It, is li it lies in my belief. Because there is no limit to God's power. Come on, talk to me somebody. There is no limit to God's power and there is nothing beyond His power. Amen? So if something hasn't worked, I cannot turn around and blame God for it. I've got to look at my own unbelief. Somewhere I missed God. Because He says, if you can believe, so what is the qualification here for the impossible? Believing. If I can believe, I can have it. So you say, Pastor, why am I not getting healed? Why don't I have a breakthrough in my finances? What is the problem I'm not seeing any breakthrough in my business? Your belief. That's why we need to learn more and more and more on faith. And we need to get the word because the source of faith is what? The Word. And the people that are going through the trouble are the ones that are least interested in the Word. They want a miracle. But miracles come from the Word. Amen. So don't be negligent. The more trouble you are in, the more Word you need. Because the Word is what will produce the faith that is needed to break forth. Amen? So, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. Now, Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall, shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have, how much, or what? What shall he have? Come on, what shall he have? Whatsoever? Not God say it. He say it. I want you to imagine the capacity, the power that God ha is ready to release on our behalf. The, the, the kind of power God is giving to a man that can believe. See, this is called unlimited dominion. Limitless. It's also unlimited breakthroughs. What There is no limit to this. What is limiting us is our level of belief. You are today where you are. Because of what, where your faith is. Why haven't you gone further? Because your faith has not grown. Are you with me, church? So the good news is, that's the bad news, but the good news is we can develop our faith and as we develop our faith, we can grow higher. Amen. God does not want you to get stuck. 
God does not want you to stagnate. God does not want you to be where you are because he has a great and a powerful and a glorious destiny for all of us. If you have stagnating, it is your faith level. If you're not going further, you have... Look, look. if you come to a standstill, if you're, if you're facing a wall, and it, whatever you do, you're trying to move forward, it, you're not being a love to, that means there is a lack of faith. That means what? That, not that you don't have faith, but you don't have enough faith to break through that barrier. Your faith has brought you to where you are right now. Are you with me? So praise God for that. Praise God for once we were sinners. But our faith has brought us to become sons of God. Amen. Come on now. You were, wherever you were in the past, God has brought you further on. And all this is by His grace and your faith. How were you saved? His grace and your faith. This is the same principle that has to be applied as we go further and further in our walk with God. The more deeper you want to go, the more higher you want to go, the more faith you require. Somebody say amen. amen. So I want to encourage every one of you to do what is required to develop your faith. Because faith can put you in a place of unlimited breakthroughs, unlimited dominion. Glory to God. See, why do I encourage you to pray every day for an hour in the Holy Ghost? Do you know why? Because the Bible says, praying much in the Holy Ghost, come on, building up your most holy faith. Come on now. What is it doing? It's building your faith. And as you grow and build your faith, your capacity to break loose from where you are stuck is increasing. Glory to God. Glory to God. See, you have to build your capacity. Let's say you're an elderly gentleman and uh, the doctor has advised you to get on a treadmill or to start walking. The first day you start walking, you walk, say, half a kilometer or less and you're gasping for breath. You're tired. Why? That is the capacity where you are right now. But if you consistently persist on that, what will happen? After a few days, you walk half a kilometer and you don't, you're not gasping for breath. You have still the most strength to walk another half a kilometer. Am I right? And then you build another half a kilometer. You can do that. Can you not? What are you doing? By doing this on a regular, consistent basis. Can you hear? Did you hear that? Not once in a while. Not once a week. But consistently, every morning, because he says, if you don't die, do it, you're going to die of high blood pressure. So that will motivate you. Come on now, say amen. amen. Or if, you're high, if you don't walk, your blood sugar levels are going to high, go up high. I want you to walk for 30 minutes every day. You don't want to die, so you'll walk for 30 minutes whether you like it or not. But you won't pray for half an hour. But you don't know you're dying spiritually. Which is more important. Spiritual things are more important than natural things. That's why Paul said, physical exercise is good, but what is more profitable is godly exercise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you with me, people of God? So what am I saying? I'm saying this, that we can increase our capacity of faith. You don't have to be where you are. Just because you come to the king's temple, and who you hear me preach on faith, you don't automatically grow by grow in faith. There is something you got to do to build your capacity. That's why he said, if you're not a doer, but only a hearer, you deceive yourself. You will know everything about faith, but you will never experience faith. You know, that you go and you read everything. Now, the doctor says you've got to walk for a half a day, half, a, half an hour, and this will build this, and this will lower your blood pressure, you'll lower your blood sugar levels, and so you go onto the websites, all the different, you study everything, but you don't walk. And you're getting all the information about walking and walking, what walking can do, and walk, what the treadmill can do, and what all this can do, and when somebody comes uh, with the same complaint, you'll say, listen, I'm telling you, this is what, these are all the advantages. You, you should do this, but you never do it. 
And the guy listens to you and says, okay, let me do it. He starts, but you don't. Tell me, guess who's going to die first? Are you getting the message? I'm praying none of you will die. That's not what God wants. God does not want you to stagnate. That's my message for you this morning. God does not want you to stagnate where you are. If you were at a certain place on the 31st of December 2014, by the time you get to 2015, 31st of December, you must be able to have a measurable increase that you can say, I was here, I've gone there. I was here, I've gone up there. This is what happened in my life, in my spiritual walk with God. I grew in my in my relation, in my fellowship with God. I Financially, I was blessed. Health-wise, I was blessed. Family-wise, I was blessed. You should have a testimony. If you don't have a testimony, it's a sign that you're not increasing your capacity in faith. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Now listen, we said, the possibilities are unlimited. Glory. Glory. John chapter 14 verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Wow. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. My God. He says we can do the works that he did. And greater works than these. This is breakthrough inexplainable. Inexplainable and undeniable breakthroughs. My God. My God. See, God is... You have to understand, we were made in the image and likeness of God. God is a creator. He is giving... He's giving us the information as to how he created stuff. I'm going to look into it a little later. But I want you to understand, he wants us to imitate him. And the only way we can walk in that realm is through faith. Amen? So faith is not something that you say, I've, I know the subject of faith. No. Faith is how you live. The just shall live by? That's right. So it's not something you use when you're in trouble. You live by faith every day of, the, of your life. You don't live without faith. You got to live. The just shall live by faith. Amen. Faith is what works wonders. Faith is the access to a world of unlimited possibilities. It is creative. Long time back, I read in a book about a man of God by the name John G. Lake. And the Bible says that uh, they were in a village and uh, suddenly there was some cry, crying and loud wailing. And they found out that this little baby, little baby, fell off or something and broke its neck, twisted, was dead. So they asked Pastor, you know, Pastor Lake to pray. He prayed for a while, nothing happened. So it was getting late. It was alone in the, you know, and he was praying. Nothing happened. But under him was another black man that was being trained. His name was Latwaba. And this man was trained in praying. He watched and observed how John G. Lake operated. He took the baby from Brother Lake's hands, went into the hut alone. Brother Lake went away, went into the hut alone and started praying with the baby in his arms, a dead baby. He kept praying, praying, and praying, and praying. Eventually, I think he declared something, and the baby became alive, and the neck was straightened. Why did I tell you this story? To tell you that faith is limitless. The power that God has, 
placed at our disposal is limitless, but it is only accessed by faith. And faith is creative. It has the power to resurrect the dead. It has the power to create. Glory to God. So no matter what challenge you're facing in life, remember, what man is saying, what circumstances are saying, what experience is saying is not the final word. God's word is the final word. Now, but you cannot move in the power of God's word if you are not equipped and enlightened with that word. Because as you hear the word, your faith begins to grow. It's not just reading. You got to hear it. And hearing with with, you know, hearing with your heart open and not with predisposed understanding of the past. And not trying to look at God's word through the glasses of a surgeon, through the glasses of a financial advisor, but looking at it with the eyes of faith. Say amen. All right. Uh, how do you operate in this faith? Let's look at a few things. Go to Romans chapter 10, please. Romans chapter 10, verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made into salvation. Believing on the inside, which is your heart, and speaking forth on the outside, is what gives birth to the creative force of faith. Write that down, please. Believing on the inside, and speaking forth on the outside, is what gives birth to creative force of faith. Now, Saying is very important. We're, as we continue, I'll, I'll be repeating a few things myself. But what, when you say something, when you make a confession, if you don't believe in what you're saying in your heart, it will not come to pass. That's why I encourage every one of you that while you're making the confessions to be able to see with the eye of meditation. When you say, I was healed by his stripes, don't just mechanically say, I was healed, I was healed, I was healed. As you say that, see that word manifesting healing in your body. Then you say it. So what you believe on the inside and say on the outside is what gives birth to the creative force of faith. It is the combination of the heart and the mouth that produces the creative force in man. What you believe on the inside and speak forth on the outside is created for you. So if you don't like certain things that are manifesting in your life, you can change it by the way you believe and the way you speak. If you understood that, say amen. amen. I'm trying to show you the importance of saying things, but not saying things flippantly, but saying things believing. Luke chapter 17, verse 5. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith... As a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto the sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. What were they asking? Increase our faith. And what was Jesus saying? 
use what you have. It's like building your muscles. I want to increase my muscle power. So what do I do? I start where I am at. I start with lifting five kgs. I don't start off with 50. I'm going to wreck myself. Correct? So I don't start with 50 and 100. I start with five. And as I use that, I grow stronger. And I go to the tens. And I then go to 15. Amen? That's how faith works as well. You've got to start where you are and start saying things, believing in your heart. If you shall say to the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the roots and be thou planted in the sea, it should obey you. Now you might say, say there, well, is that really possible? If it were not possible, Jesus would not have said it. Amen. That means you can grow in your faith to the point where it will blow the minds of people. Your faith has the capacity to do the impossible and blow the minds of people. That's what Jesus is saying here. This is beyond imagination. Can you think of commanding a tree to be plucked and then say, go and fall in the, into the ocean or into the sea? But it can also happen. He's showing us here the limitless possibilities through faith. But he says, your action... Your involvement in that is important. It is not just God. God gives us the word and God gives us the faith as we listen. But the operator is you, not God. Are you with me, church? So it is not sitting in a corner, shedding tears and crying and begging God. All right? It is getting the word, growing in faith to the degree that now you are strong enough to stand up and say things. And when you say, he says, it shall obey you. So here, listen. Don't relegate everything to God and say, well, if it is God's will, he will do it. It is God's will. That's why he gave us the word. It is God's will for you to be healed. That's why he gave us the word. It is God's will for you to prosper. That's why he gave us the word. It is God's will for you to be promoted. That's why he gave us the word. It is God's will for you to lead and be on top, not at the bottom. That's what he said in his word. Amen. But how do I get to that point? I need to get the word that increases my capacity in faith. That I can now in believing say what I'm, what I'm believing. And when I say that, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we say, so I can say, all right, let me, let me read this and then I will say this. Mark 11, 20, sorry, Mark eleven twenty three. 23, once again. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Whatsoever he saith. But remember, whosoever shall say, what, where, where is the... The importance here. What is Jesus really making? Uh, what is he highlighting in this, in this scripture, in this verse? Your involvement. Your part. Not God's part. Your part. If you will say and not doubt in your heart, you shall have whatsoever you say. Not what God said. Say amen. amen. Now, so you listen to me this morning and you're driving by and you see Taj Krishna. I say, I, I believe I received Taj Krishna. That's a joke. And there are people that are doing that. They walk by and they, I believe I'm saying that car is mine. That's joke. Do you really believe you will have it? No, you don't. You don't even have the image of it. Don't play jokes with God's word. And make a mockery of God's word. And make a fool of yourself. And then say, I said it. I said I will have a car. It never happened. Why? Because you could not believe it first. You don't have to go and say, Taj Krishna is mine. God will give you better than Taj Krishna if you have the faith. But what am I trying to show you here? I'm showing you from scripture the creative power of faith. But this creative power has now been released unto us by God. That we have a part to play and we can be co-creators with God. 
as his word impacts us, as his word begins to inspire us, as his word begins to increase our faith, faith cometh by hearing the word. As that word comes and faith begins to grow, my belief begins to grow. And as I begin to believe, glory to God, I begin to say it. That's when the breakthrough will manifest. Somebody say amen. amen. So remember, whosoever shall say, glory to God. Glory to God. So don't say I'm going to die soon. I'm going to die of heart, heart attack. I'm going to die of arthritis. I'm going to die of this. I'm going to die. No. Why do you want to empower the devil? Say I will live and fulfill my destiny. Glory to God. I will live and complete the task that God has, my assignment on earth. It doesn't matter how long you live. But when you are done, you should go away from here saying, I have finished my assignment. Whatever God has called me to accomplish on the earth, my assignment. Remember, we've all come here with an assignment. And the reason we're going to be taken away from here is because God has another assignment for us somewhere else. We don't know which planet God is going to put you on. We don't know where God is going to take us. But once you are born as a spirit, there is no death for you. The spirit cannot die. Amen. Your body will die, but your spirit and soul will not die. You'll either end up in hell or heaven, but once you end up in heaven with God, you're not going to just sit there and do nothing. There is an assignment for you. Glory to God. So while we are here, let us, when we get up to the Lord, be diligent on this planet that when we appear in His presence, He will look at us and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. I congratulate you because you finished what I asked you to do. See, we are all here in assignment. We're not here just so that we can build houses. Buy cars, fly planes, all that's like a little child playing with stuff in his playtime. But there is something serious about life. It is not just so that I have enough money that when the time comes, I want to get my children married before I retire. I want so much money there so I can have my retirement plan and then die. You didn't come just to be born and die. You came here to do something for God. Amen. He said we were created for His pleasure. We didn't come here just to amass wealth. Wealth will come after us. Money will come after you. See, no parent has any difficulty or does not feel the pain to bless his little children with toys when they're obedient and they're doing what they're told to do. In fact, it gives them joy to give them good toys to play with. But while they're enjoying the toys, there are times when they say, come on now, it's time to study. Because they know they're here not to just to play, play and waste their time. Their play is good. But they're here for more, more important things than just playing around. They have to accomplish something. If you understood that, say amen. amen. I'm talking to all of you this morning. Remember, you're here on an assignment. And the assignment that God gives to each one of us is to do the impossible. The assignment that God has for us is to do the impossible. And the impossible cannot be done without faith. And faith cannot be received without the word. So we need the word and we need to understand there is a part that I have to play and to release my faith, the creative force of faith or the creative power of faith, I need to participate with God and speak and say what I believe. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory. Now, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which, were, which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Listen. Through faith, 
God believed in his heart and spoke with his mouth and everything he said came to pass. If you read carefully the book of Genesis chapter 1, God said and then it says God saw. God said and then God saw. He said it before he saw it in the natural. Because he already saw it in his spirit. Amen? Amen. So, God has placed a weapon in your hands and in mine. Just like he placed a weapon in the hands of Moses. Exodus chapter 4 verse 17 says, And thou shalt take this rod in thine hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. God gave him a rod and he said, With this you shall do signs. He was promoting Moses into the realm of signs and wonders, operating in signs and wonders. Do you remember what he said? He said to Moses, he said, Moses, I will make you a God to Pharaoh. I will make you a God to Pharaoh. See where God was placing Moses. And he said, I'm giving you this rod for signs and wonders. We look at Moses and say, wow, great man. Powerful. He did some amazing miracles, yes. But Jesus came on the scene and said, the greatest prophet of all time was John the Baptist. But John the Baptist is less than the least in the kingdom. So can you see where God is placing us today? My God. If only we can comprehend the status that God has provided us. And we can receive that word of faith and begin to operate. There is nothing that can stop you. Glory to God. Now remember, every one of you shall progress in life. From today, every stagnation is going to stop and cease. Every stagnation in your life is coming to a halt and will be destroyed in, your, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Now you've got to begin to get this word now. And start saying the word. Don't say your circumstances. Don't say what people are saying. Don't say what the newspaper is saying. Say what God said. Don't say, oh my God, I'm feeling feverish. Is it swine flu? No, it's not. I'm not getting a proper witness in this house. Am I speaking to unbelievers or believers? Well, praise God, I hope so. Come on, we got to say, a thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand my right hand, but it shall not come nigh me. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm redeemed of the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That's what the Bible says. That means every redeemed child must keep saying, I am redeemed. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. That means I'm redeemed from sickness. I'm redeemed from second death. I'm redeemed from poverty. I cannot remain poor another day in my life. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. Glory to God. You got to say God's word. God has given us a rod. God has given us his word to do signs, wonders, and miracles. Somebody shout hallelujah. We are commissioned to be co-creators with God. God does not count it robbery that you are standing in that office. This is the reason why you were created. This is the reason why he created you and I in his image and in his likeness so that we can operate in his class. That's why we need to learn how God operates. And he gave us his word through which he made faith available to enable us to do this. The word has been given to increase our faith, to give us faith. The reason many fail is because this appears too simple to be powerful and too simple to be real. Satan keeps attacking this simplicity in innocent minds. It seems, sounds very simple, but it is extremely profound and powerful. And no matter how many times you've heard this word, you have to hear it again. Because until we come into the realm of unlimited dominion, unlimited breakthroughs. Now we got to, now my friend, when are we going to see the dead raised? 
We know that God has given us the commission. We all have to grow in this faith. When are we going to see instant miracles more often? Not just when the pastors and great men of God are doing. Instant miracles happening with the body of Christ. Just you going and laying hands on somebody and they're getting instantly healed. When are we going to see all this? What is limiting us? Our faith. Our faith. So I pray that as we continue in this study, God will stir something in your hearts that this message will come afresh into your minds and into your spirits. Amen? That you will not sit there and say, I heard this before. No, you might have heard it a thousand times, but it's coming in a fresh way this morning. And I will continue to teach this because I believe this church has to grow stronger in its walk with God in faith. And I pray for all of you that God will enable you to live in victory. Not wishful thinking, but in faith. Say Amen. Thank you for joining our online community. For weekly updates, make sure you subscribe to our channel and also click the bell button for further notifications.